Hey, if you've been playing music as long as I have, there's a good chance that you got a stack of these laying around. And whether they're demo tapes, independent releases, or just a bunch of song ideas, you're going to want to somehow get these transferred over to a permanent media at some point in time. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm your host, Mark V, and this is Tips, Tricks, Giggles, and Stuff. everybody welcome now back in the day long time ago long before digital downloads long before streaming even before cds was this wonderful era in which the cassette tape reigned king now the cassette tape was really the first time that you could easily carry your music with you portably and you could record on it now this opened up a lot of opportunities for musicians because now they had the tools in which they can actually record themselves and create demo tapes save song ideas, even put together an entire release if they wanted to. Not only that, but it ushered in an entire generation of wannabe DJs and hopeless romantics who'd put together playlists in the form of a mixtape and send it off to that certain special someone. Yes, the cassette tape plays a very important part in music history. Problem is, it's a mechanical device. It's a piece of plastic tape that's wound around two spindles, and to play it back, it goes across a metal head. It's eventually going to wear out. It's eventually going to break. If you ever had one of these in your car for a long period of time, it never ended up good. So if you have some of these that are left over that you really want to keep what's on there, I strongly suggest that you get them transferred over as quick as you can. And I'm going to show you how to do that today. So the first thing I want you to do, though, take the tape out of its container. I want you to then take the pencil inside of here, and I want you to slowly... Slowly wind it. Wind it as far as you can go one direction. Wind it the other direction. Back and forth, slowly and slowly. Reason for this, because this tape will get old, it'll get brittle, it'll get sticky. And the last thing that you want to do is put this into your tape deck and start rewinding it as it's going at several hundred revolutions a minute and then just snap the tape. So you want to slowly loosen it up before you, you put any sort of speed or pressure onto it. Okay, from there, let's go on over to the uh, my workstation, and I'll show you how all that's going together. Okay, first thing we want to do is set up our tracks. Now, we're going to do a separate track for both left and right. As opposed to doing a single stereo track, which has left and right built into it, we're going to do a separate one for left and right. reason for that is that way we have full control under each channel for both faders and pans. If you're to choose the uh, stereo, you're kind of confined to what they work together, work as together. So, so input one will be our left channel. And input two will be our right. Okay, next thing we want to do is we want to play a little clip of the song and see where our levels are. We don't want any red to appear up here in the, in the master track uh, indicators. We're going to use compressors and limiters later to kind of bring up the level during our mastering part. So we want to make sure that we have a good, clean, non-clipping signal going into it. And if you're already hitting red here, you, it's going to be hard to back those peaks down and give it a nice balanced feel. So let's go ahead and just play some of this. And as you see, we're already hitting red here. So I'm going to go ahead and pull back these inputs. Gonna knock each one down about 8 dB. Go ahead and get the pans set right. As you can see, we got some yellow, which is about what we want. We'll have a nice solid signal on here that the uh, compressors and limiters can work with then. Alright. So now I'm gonna go ahead and rewind it. And then we're gonna record the first track. The song we're using today is called Roller Coaster. It's by a buddy of mine named Mike Ward. He recorded this stuff on a four track back in spring of 93 and I came across this tape the other day it's like I am going to try to digitize and, and bring some life to this old uh, cassette tape so here we go
now that we got a good solid recording of this, it's time to get uh, into the mastering phase and start applying some uh, compressors and limiters and uh, a little stereo spread. What we hope to achieve with the stereo spread is I want to take it from the four tracks uh, left and right channels that he had out to about this wide. So there's some good uh, plugins in, in GarageBand that'll do that. What a compressor is going to do is it's going to take the lows and bring them up. It's going to take the highs and it's going to bring them down, volume-wise, not uh, tone-wise. And what a limiter will do is it's just going to cap it. It's not going to let anything get higher than whatever we set it to. So first of all, let's start with our stereo spread. Played around with this a little bit earlier and I found that the order of, of six with just 100% left and right really gives me about what, what I'm looking for. So let's go ahead and try that. So it subtly takes it from here out to here without being too wide and affecting the tone too much. So I'm happy with that. Now we're going to hit it with some compression. I'm doing a little bit of a gain bump here. Not a whole lot, because there's some pretty hot spots still in this thing. What this is doing is this is, uh, like I said, it's taking the, the softer volumes and bringing it up while bringing the lowers down, kind of squishing it, which also increases the, uh, the sustain a little bit. Next we're going to hit it with a multipressor. What this is is a fast attack uh, four band multiprocessor compressor. And this is really where the oomph is going to come in. You, you'll notice over here, you know, I'm getting pretty high yellows. As soon as I get it, we're right up into the reds. And I'm starting to hear a little clipping on that. So now we're going to go ahead and hit it with the limiter. a little hot on the bolt pressure. Sounds like I'm getting a little bit of over clipping going on here, but that may be on the recording itself. After all, it was a four track tape and a bass going direct in. All right, all in all, I believe I've got a good sounding mix. And what I'm going to do is the, uh, the fade out that he had here, I'm just going to go ahead and fade it a little faster towards the tail. That way you eliminate catching any of that tape hiss that ends up on the end there. Now I'm going to go ahead and set my region as to where I want it to start and where I want it to end. And I think we are ready to do a mix down. So you going to share, export song to disk. Go Mike Ward roller coaster. I'm gonna go wave. I'm just gonna go CD quality. I don't think that going a 24 bit is going to gain us anything since it was originally on a four track analog cassette tape. Replace the previous.
right, so there you have it. I took the audio off of a 30-year-old cassette tape, pulled it into my DAW, added some mastering tools, and now I have a digital copy of this that'll last forever. Hope you found this interesting. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. And be sure to stick around because I'm going to go ahead and play the entire copy of Roller Coaster by my friend Mike Ward as a special bonus. Until next time, I'm Mark V. This is Tips, Tricks, Giggles, and Stuff.